So T is the period of the oscillation. That's what one of these constants is, the period. A is the amplitude. That tells you how big the oscillation is. The only other question is, what's this phi? And you can see what it does. It just adds to what, whatever's going on here. What if I pick t equals zero? Think of, it's, when you're trying to figure out what phi is, it's often useful to look at t equals zero. At time t equals zero, this part is zero. If I look at this graph here, y better be zero and headed upward. If the first term is zero, what, what is the whole Function, what is the whole thing inside here? Not sure what to call it, so I'm going to call it capital phi. What is that whole thing inside there? 2 pi over the, over the period times time plus phi. What does that have to equal if you find y equals 0 and later times, in other words, this thing gets larger, is going up? When is sine equal to zero and about to head upward? What angle? How about pi? Is sine equal to zero? Could this point right here have a total angle of pi? Because what I've plotted here is not angle. This is not equal to the total angle. In fact, what I've plotted there on this graph is time. As time goes on, this thing oscillates back and forth. And what I'm asking you about, I guess, is to think about when the sine of some angle is equal to zero and headed upward. So let me answer it for you, because you're probably thinking, how easy is this, or how hard is this, or is this a trick question? Um, when capital phi is zero, the sine of that capital, the sine of zero is equal to zero, and for larger capital phi's, it's headed upward. This could be could be capital phi equals zero. The problem is there are other times, there are other values of capital phi where you're at zero and headed upward, like 2 pi and 4 pi, minus 2 pi, minus 4 pi. There are all sorts of possible values for capital phi, for all of the stuff in there. And what phi does, this little phi here, is it shifts you around it, it shifts the entire graph here to the left or to the right. If I shift the entire graph by 2 pi in either direction, it makes no difference at all. You might say, why would I, who, why would I even put that in there? If I shift it by 2 pi, it makes no difference. Well, what if I shift it by pi? What if I shift the entire graph by pi, then at t equals 0, instead of this thing going up, this thing would be coming down. So what that does, basically, what this little phase angle phi does, do I even mention? Yeah, phi is called the phase. What the phase does is it takes care, basically, it takes care of t equals 0. This thing is oscillating. What do I want to call t equals 0? Maybe I want to call it when it's all the way at the bottom and I've just let go. If t equals 0, is all the way at the bottom, and I've just let go, then it's at minus A, because it's all the way at the bottom. I've just let go, and then it oscillates. So this doesn't exactly look like a sine function. Kind of looks like a cosine function, except it's kind of the negative of a cosine function. Well, rather than do all of that, what I would say is that's a sine function from here. And so 
And so this thing has been shifted over by that angle, by that phase angle phi. This is still a sine function, but that phase angle is equal to what? Well, what is the phase, what is, when I put t equals zero here, y at t equals zero, just look up here and figure it out, a is sitting there. At t equals zero, this term's gone, so the only thing left is that. If you look at t equals zero, you can figure out what phi is right away. What does phi have to be? I need y to be negative a. I've shifted it by an amount pi over 2. So is it negative or positive pi over 2, phi? This phi right here, in order to get this negative a, that has to be negative pi over 2. Phi is negative pi over 2. I shifted the thing to the right, and yet phi is negative. Phi is the opposite of what you might have felt it was going to be. I feel like I'm saying, you could think of it this way. You, you might say, well, I've shifted my graph to the right. All right. You, you could also say, I've taken my, my, uh, I've taken my axes, my x, y, uh, y and t axes, I've shifted them to the left. Phi is actually, the, if you want the sign of phi, look at where the axes shifted. The axes shifted to, in the negative direction, so phi is a negative number. <coughs> negative pi over 2. Or you could just solve this equation. Y at t equals 0 is clearly negative a. That's what I've drawn. It has to be negative a. If you solve this equation, you'll find out that, that phi is minus pi over 2. Now, there's a problem with phi, and that is that 3 pi over 2 is just as good an answer as minus pi over 2. In fact, minus pi over 2 works, but so does everything else if you add two pi, a multiple of 2 pi to it. So phi is ill-determined because it can always, you can always add a multiple of 2 pi to it and not change anything. But at least if I tell you minus pi over 2, then you'll draw something like this, I hope. And if I tell you 3 pi over 2, you will draw exactly the same thing. And if I draw, tell you 7 pi over 2, you'll draw exactly the same thing. So I have some questions for you. Picture to the right shows theta for two oscillating hoops. Consider the solid black line and the blue dotted line. How is this physical situation for these two data sets different? It's obvious that the hoop for the blue data set has, so I've asked questions like this before. I want to go back and remind you, when I say obvious, I mean if you calculate an amplitude or a period, and it looks like it's probably about the same for those two things, then it is exactly the same. Only if things are obviously very different should you assume they're different. I'm not trying to trick you with nearby values that are almost the same but not quite. I'm, I'm looking for things that are obvious. So, what's obvious? Different amplitude, different period, a different phase, Two of the above, or all of the above, 